Welcome to Me Too Music Presents, a conversation and music experience with the Me Too Music family playing and singing with a guest. This week's guest is LaQuisha Barris Finn, also known as Qui. So thank you for joining us. Sit back and let's go.
Everything you promised me, Lord Every word you spoke to me Glorious thing Glorious thing Glorious things Glorious things Which I still believe Scooter Lamont. Scooter Lamont. On time. New project from St. Louis area singer, songwriter, and producer. Featuring 16 new songs. Like All Right. Just hold on. Where Would I Be? I Don't Want It. Teach Me. So glad you did. energy church and song good to me praise and his title cut on time scooter lamont on time available now at the source at me too music.com forward slash the source that's m-e-t-o-music.com forward slash the source or at me too music.com forward slash scooter lamont that's m-e-t-o-music.com forward slash scooter lamont on time get it today Join host Don Rob Alvin and Two every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time for Wake Up St. Louis Me Too Music Sunday Morning Show. Streaming live every Sunday morning on Facebook and YouTube. Wake Up St. Louis Me Too Music Sunday Morning Show. Join us for laughs, great music, the word, information, news, more laughs, more great music. Every Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Wake Up St. Louis Me Too Music Sunday Morning Show. Wake up St. Louis, it's the Me Too. Y'all, 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 welcome, welcome, and welcome again. Uh, we welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you three times in the name of Jesus Christ. My mom just got so mad at me. Anyway, <laughs> I am Levi King, and I am honored today. I'm honored today. It's my privilege to be sitting here with the one and only Mrs. LaQuisha Burris Finn, right? Yes. F-I-N-N Finn. F-I-N-N. Who just got married, by the way. I just found this out before... Uh, we actually started taping. First of all, welcome, welcome, and we welcome you once. We welcome you. <laughs> she a church girl. She get it. She understands. Three times. You, let's just jump right into this marriage thing. Let's jump in it. Like you got married in May. In May, May thirteenth, twenty twenty three. Talk about. Um, to my lovely husband Matthew Finn. Shout out to you, babe. Um, I married him. He was my boss. At work. At work. And I would not date him as he was my boss. And I would give him time day. Call that's me funny. up. That's that's pretty funny. He's white. <laughs> oh, you're going to just say it. <laughs> I was wondering if she was going to say it. She told me before. He's white. <laughs> so, did he have children? He does not have any children. But you have how four many? Four children. Wow. wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. Hold up. Mm-hmm. How has that been? It's been great. What's the age range of your children? 17, 16. I got three girls and a boy. So, I got a 17-year-old girl. 16 year old daughter, my five year old that we will talk about later, and my four year old son. And so it's been different. So clearly and obviously, you're a singer. You are a singer, singer, honestly. Uh, your tone is amazing. Let me ask you this first. You know, like, who did you listen to growing up? Who influenced you? Uh, Whitney Houston, Kim Burrell. The Kim part is actually very obvious. Oh, Kim. Yeah. Um, Beverly Crawford, hmm. you know, so me, Fred Hammett, all, I mean, I'm Who would excited. you say is one of your greatest influences of all time? Cleveland. James Cleveland? Absolutely. He's one of your, as a singer? As a singer. Are you serious? I have never asked that question to somebody yeah. and they said James Cleveland. Yeah. Really? Yes. There's, wow, there's, a, there's a certain, there's a certain, um, storytelling in his music mm. and I love it and the way he 
tells the story of the song. Lord, do it. You know, mm-hmm. he, he, you know, you know, he just, Lord, do it. He, he just know how to tell the story. You know, he just oh. know how to tell the story in his song, and I believe the singing is a part of the storytelling. Absolutely, absolutely. When uh, when did you realize that you could sing? Um, what age? Around age four. And you, that's when you realized you could sing. Mm-hmm. Wow. So how did it happen? Like, what's the beginning? What's your origin story of singing? My mother is a choir director. Okay. Um, my father is a singer, and he plays the piano mm-hmm. um, and guitar. So they used to sing, and they used to make us sing. So we had family things where they would teach us how to sing. We were the first. Before choir rehearsal, we were the practice. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, y'all had to sing. I was a soprano at the time. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they just used to practice with us. And so my first, I had the first solo song for the Christmas production called Happy Birthday Jesus. Ah, this is the first song you ever sang in public? That first day, first song ever at four years old. You actually remember that day? Happy Birthday, yeah, they, well. they recorded it. Sound like a goat. And was that, your, that was your home church where you grew up? My home church, yes. Wow. Church of the Little Little God. And then after that, did it just become normal? Did you, was this like a consistent thing? You just kept singing? I love to teach. So I started off teaching. Uh, so I started off working on my, my mom would work on my voice. And I would help others, like even if like, I was six, I would help like everybody else that was seven, eight, nine, mm. work on their pitch and like work on their tone. Wow. And, like begin to give, teach parts. I was teaching parts at six years old. Wow. Uh, I was kind of I was a director at seven. That's, choir director. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Right? <laughs> so did you, like how long did you stay at that church? Like what age did you leave that church? I left the church when I was 15. So, so by the time you were 15, what was your normal weekly role? My role was I was the, the minister of music at, that church. at uh, Main Street Church of Little God. Huh. The junior. I was underneath China. Wow. Rest, rest in rest herself. Wow. Yeah, so, so by the time you left there, is that where you, was it at the church where you really cut your teeth for real or did you do things outside of the church, singing-wise, music-wise? I didn't do a lot of things outside of the church. Uh, outside of my church, yes. I began to sing for other people. I began to sing in other people's groups and choirs. Um, my uncles uh, would have me come do things on like background. My uncle Conrad Lee, uh, which he's a producer and he plays the guitar. Mm-hmm. And so I would be singing background things for his projects. And I hear that. Quartet. You know he can play. She said, good talk. Guitar. <laughs> that means he can play. Yep, absolutely. My uncle Conrad. Yes. So, at what age? How old were you when you when you realized you were good? Good, like hmm, I would say, when I used to when I was in high school, when we begin no middle school, we used to did plays. So you had to be audition for plays, had audition for like the Black History Month thing, and I was picked out to do Black Brother. Strong. But Angie Stone. Angie Stone. And I had to get a group together. And you were in what grade? I was in the seventh grade. She's falling for this. She don't even know. She wouldn't tell me her age before the interview. Ah! And she don't know. I'm the master at this. This is what I do. <laughs> you just told your age. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now I know exactly how it was. Your oh, age. my goodness. <laughs> he was not supposed to know my age. Uh-huh. Now I know. Yep. So, okay. So you out there singing for the devil. Uh, you singing Black Brother? Black Brother. And I'm just playing as a child. Lord, Lord. Uh, so, you are from where, though? I'm from Decatur, Illinois. And you grew up in Decatur? Grew up in Still Decatur. Still in Decatur? I live in Champaign, Illinois now. Which is how far was the distance? It's about an hour away from Decatur. You go back often or what? Absolutely. I go back and do, uh, unfortunately, a lot of funerals. Uh, I go back for, like, anniversaries. I just went back from Main Street's uh, church anniversary for my, my godfather is Thomas Walker. Mm. Um, godmother is Margaret Walker. They own Walker Funeral mm. Services in Chapel. And so I just went back for there, you know, as a surprise for him for his birthday. And I went and led and, and helped lead worship and stuff like that. So now you're in Champaign mm-hmm. doing what? I do a lot of things. I do I minister music at Restoration Church or my pastor, none other than. The elect, I'm just like you know. Come on, give it to me. Go, let's go. Uh, Andre Crinidin the Third. I'm just like 
It's just Andre, hey, Andre Crenadine. And you said that's who wrote uh, Our Father. Who you, you are holy. holy. Yep, he's been singing. We give you glory. Been singing awesome. for Ricky Dillard for 30 years. That's your pastor. Yes, he How is. How's that been? Oh, my God. Amazing. He's uh, helped cultivate me. Helped push me further in my ministry. And then he deals with me. I'm a lot to deal with. Hmm. I would never think. It's hmm. <laughs> a shock to me. It's a shock to <laughs> you. Uh, what about the pressure? Is there pressure uh, from him? Him being who he is and what he's done, what he's achieved, the pressure you working under him. Absolutely, I he's pretty back. demanding. V- very much so. Like you know, rec- when recording deadlines, and I know you know about this. Mm-hmm. Recording deadlines are due. Is we're going to Chicago now, so I have to go. I'm at work. Like uh, I need to get off early. We got to go finish this tonight. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's just a lot. He's he's traveling, and I try to, as a minister of music, try to travel with him as a praise and worship leader. But then also I sing background for him. So it's just double. Whether he's preaching or he's in artistry, it kind of is, is, is a lot. Y'all, I'm sitting here with the one and only. I'm calling her the one and only because oh, y'all goodness. just don't understand. Uh, we're going we gonna to pay some bills right quick. We're going to go to a commercial real quick. But I got to say this. First time I heard you, and like I said, I told you this before we started interviewing. People were looking at me and acting like I was... Something was wrong with me for not knowing who you were. And I, I just hadn't heard of you yet. But we were at Larry's thing for, for uh, that was Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Oh, you were freshly married. That was the end of May. Yeah, I was freshly married. Wow. He wasn't there today, was he? He was not. Okay. He stayed home. He had to work. So we were up there for Larry's thing, the outside, uh, his gospel fest. And you weren't even on program to sing. No, right? I was just coming to support. He put you on stage and you fussed at the musician. I was just playing. I was just playing. She was on stage, and uh, yeah, I was sitting out there eating some nachos or something. I wasn't even paying attention, honestly, at the time. And you caught my attention, needless to say. I was definitely paying attention after that. And uh, yeah, talked to Randy and just kind of wanted to make this happen. Kind of wanted to introduce you to our St. Louis family. So St. Louis family, this is, what does everybody call you, Kui? They call me Kui. This is Kui, y'all. <laughs> We're going to be right back. Y'all stay tuned. Stay locked. Be sure to stay tuned and stay locked. Don't go anywhere. We have another performance coming up right here on Me Too Music Presents. Me Too Music Presents the St. Louis Area Fellowship 3 every time. Every, every time. The new live project featuring Pastor Raphael Darden, Jesse Williams, Pastor Michael Lamp, Scooter Lamont, Mark David Dorn, Corn Robinson Jr., Leon Richardson, Tamika Fogey, Mitchell Ford, Christopher J. Watkins, Leandra Hill, Amy Connor, Jennifer Kelly, Jermaine Manor, Jesse Prather, Lady Charnel Jones Frank, Dr. Timothy D. Price III, Shawanda Smith, Rodney Douglas, and Mariah Harris. It's available now for free download at MeTooMusic.com forward slash the source. That's M E T O M U S I C. Com forward slash the source. And the entire recording can be viewed on Levi Me Too Music King YouTube page. St. Louis Area Fellowship 3. E- every time. Every time. Get it now. Everybody's singing with a lie. What's going on on the gospel scene in this local area? Well, for more information, check us out here on Me Too Music Minute. For everything that's happening from concerts to plays to current events, check us out. Be sure to friend us on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube or visit MeTooMusic.com and join our mailing list. Check us out on Me Too Music Minute. And welcome back. Welcome back. I'm sitting here with the, with the one and only. I'm, I'm still saying it. Yep. Listen to me. I'm calling this. The one and only, Quisha Burris Finn. Burris or Burris? Burris. Burris. Quisha Burris Finn. Que y'all. This is Quee sitting here. Okay, uh, let me ask you this question real quick. Uh, give me your top sitcom all time. Oh, my goodness. Vessel Raven, Martin. Did you just name Vessel Raven before you named Martin? Yes, I did. Saved by the Bell. <laughs> um, Saved by the Bell with Lisa Turtle or the second girl they came in? Lisa Turtle. Okay, I was there. There we go. Living Single. Okay. And, oh my God, five. That's hard. That's hard. Five, five. Give me one more. Wayne's brother. Wow, really? Yes. Okay. Give me a hug. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> okay, so, so you know what's interesting to me? Here it is, you're a female singer. And like I said, I definitely hear 
Kimberly. I hear Pastor Kimberly. I hear her tone. I hear the influence in some of your tone and how you shape some of your words. This is amazing to me as a female singer. First of all, you named Reverend James Cleveland. It's just amazing that you didn't name the typical. I love that too, though. You didn't name the typical Karen Clark, Lorinda, Mesmer, you know, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Um, growing up, what was the music scene in your house? What did you all listen to? Oh, goodness. Definitely James Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Um, we listened to the Clark sisters because my, my, my mom and them had a group, uh, and they were similar to the Clark sisters. Mm. So we listened to the Clark sisters. We listened to, oh my gosh, Shirley Caesar. We listened to all the- Are you just trying to give me all the saved answers? Who did you listen to from the second side? I know you listened oh my, to something. Oh my, it was on Saturday. I'm trying to see how saved you are. So on Saturday, uh -huh. my mama put it on blues music when it's time to clean out. So you like blues? Baseball. I love the blues. Okay, so we were up in uh, we were up there in Marion for Larry's thing, and I heard your testimony about your daughter. You said she's four or five now. She's five now. She's five now. Talk to us. Tell us this story. Oh my goodness! So, my daughter was born with a uh, rare just disorder called 22Q. So her 22nd chromosome never developed. So that could give you a variety of heart conditions. You know, eating. D disorder uh, is the cousin Eating to disorder autism. in like what way? Cleft palate. So gotcha. where you cannot, you know, chew, aspirate, back up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or you can swallow your food or, or hold or things like that. So she did have that. She could not keep food down. If the food down, she would mm. aspirate it back up. Mm. And so this is crazy. And you said it's cousin to or kin to what? It's a cousin to Down syndrome and autism. Hmm. 22Q. When it's with you. Never heard of that. Never in my life. It's, a, it's very rare. And it's very rare that if you have cleft palate, that the heart condition too is associated with it. What so it? she or, so we have four chambers in our heart. We have the upper two and the bottom two, lower two. Mm -hmm. Her the her lower chambers never developed. So she only had basically a half of her heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so she was born with a heart defect. And she went and undergo so many surgeries. She actually had a 5% chance of recovery for the last few surgeries that we were in, but we could not afford not to give it to her because mm -hmm. the other one was death. She was not sure. supposed to live to four years old. We usually, we literally have um, her, her parent, her grandparents on her father's side. They literally have, uh, we have insurance and everything. We had to talk. We were literally prepared to spend the, the four years with her and love on her, keep her, and to bury her. Mm. Now she's five. She's how, five. how close is she to six? She is close. She's turned six in March. So how has it affected her quality of life? Like um, she spent most. We spent most of our lives in hospital. Um, and then I have four. I have, I have three other children. So you know, to at the time that she's had multiple surgeries. So recently, her last surgeries was the year before last. Last year, last year, mm -hmm. last year, I had a stroke almost two, almost two years ago now. So I had a stroke and I had a stroke in November. In December, she had to get open heart surgery again. So weeks and I had to be there. She actually got three open heart surgeries. In so crazy, you're telling me you had a stroke and the fact that I didn't stay there for a minute because what's crazy is the story about your daughter. Mm -hmm. So it, it's almost like, hold on, she just said she had a stroke, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Like, how did it affect you physically? Did you lose uh, yeah. motion on one side? My, uh, like, my left side was, uh, I was paralyzed, my entire left side. How long? It's bedridden, four or five months. Wow. It's bedridden. It's bedridden, and when I did get up out of the bed, I had to be wheeled in a wheelchair. Like for her surgeries, I was in a wheelchair and they had some support for me and support for her because I had to be there. Okay, so two and two is adding up for me mm -hmm. as a producer, as a person who, I'm, I'm a person who really pays attention to body language. I pay attention to what you say. I pay attention to how you say things. Mm -hmm. And um, this is my first time really sitting down and talking to you, but you, you, you seem to be Tell me if I'm wrong. Part of you seems to be 
a little no nonsense. Not that you don't like to have fun, but you seem to be straight to the point. This is how it is. Let's do it this way. Um, now it makes sense. It makes sense why now. When, when you go through these type of tragedies, I think it, it, it gives you a different type of perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Life is not promised. So how's your daughter now? Oh my gosh, she's thriving. She actually went to kindergarten. I thought that was my next question. Is she going to be able to go to school is what I was going to ask. So they, they wanted to. She has divide all eyes. Uh, they use her in the studies of, at the major colleges. She is the new study for speech therapy, for heart. Doctors, when we go to the doctor, doctor they, do we have our students come in? Hmm. Y'all, I let them. They listen to her heart. They listen to the murmur. They listen to how she said, I want them to learn because they're, they're learning. She has defeated so many odds. And with them learning from her, it'll help them. It'll help, it'll them help be Madison, better doctors. period. Yeah, absolutely. She's in their study. So when they study on speech, they actually studying her without her name. In a whole, in like thousands of colleges. Well, I know a lot of times when our children go through, of course, we become educated. Did I hear you say earlier that you're a nurse? I or became did... a nurse after that, yeah. Oh, after that? Mm -hmm. See, that's what I was about to say. It makes sense. I, I hear the terminology and I hear how you're talking and you seem to be well educated. Wow. And you became, so how long has that been? That, I've, that was, been a nurse for almost two years. After I recovered from my stroke within six months. So after stroke, your stroke? I went right to my sister. Came to see me. This has been a pretty crazy two years for you. Mm -hmm. Stroke, your daughter, did she show any signs? Did you know this from birth? That something? They knew it before birth. We just didn't know what all we would have to, we didn't know it was to that extent. So you know certain things, before birth, but then it could not confirm it until she was born. Mm. And then it went, it was rocky from the very beginning. She is certain things like she didn't walk until she was almost two. Oh, wow. She didn't talk. So speech, she didn't talk. She would point, we would do sign. But we knew that we were going to have to, it's a long, it's a tricky route. She's talking now? She's talking. Wow. Yes. It makes sense now. It, it, it makes sense. Uh, because of course, when I knew we were going to do this, I watched watched a few videos. And just the way I see you interact, the way I see you, just kind of the way you move on stage, it, it makes sense. Now I see the I, I see I see the seriousness. I see I see and and I can tell you this: um, when I hear you sing, there's a level of conviction that I hear in your singing too. If, if I can use that term, if that's the right term, that's the and now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. Wow. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. I'm changing gears completely. Go ahead. Because that, that that did something to me. Um, are you a church's chicken or a Popeye's kind of girl? I'm church's chicken all day. All day? Really? <laughs> the grease and all? Grease and all. Give it to me. Give me the grease. Okay, well, let me ask you this. If you had to put together your perfect fast food meal, are you a hamburger eater or what? Somewhat. What do you do eat from fast food? Like, you eat, are you chicken or are you uh, like sandwiches, chicken sandwiches, chicken fish sandwiches, sandwiches? Spicy. Okay, where where are you getting the chicken sandwich from? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. So you you like theirs over Popeyes when they had the whole debate? Yes. Okay. Popeyes was, they Popeyes was cat. Chick Fil A. Oh. It was cat. See, I haven't had, eaten chicken in probably about six years, so I never got to taste. Oh my it. goodness. Six six yeah about six years now. Six That's years this month actually. That's so month. you're getting chicken sandwiches from. Mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. where are you getting your order of fries from? They ain't Wendy's, they nasty. Yeah. Well, um, even though they're new for they changed the fries within the last, they're, they're better. They're definitely better. Okay. I mean, is, is, is Wingstop a fast food place? Oh, we, oh. Because Wingstop fries. Now, you know what? My wife picked me up from Wing, and I had never had Wingstop. Ooh. She got me something called the Voodoo Fries. Ooh. Lord, forgive me. I'm saved. They listen call Voodoo he, Fries. Listen you ever had the Voodoo Fries? Absolutely. Man, I'm going to get something today. It's fire. Yeah. I would get my fries from them now. They okay, the I'm, I'm with you on that. So Chick-fil-A, chicken sandwich, wing stop, voodoo fries. Mm -hmm. That's the cheese, the Ooh, yeah. peppers. Yes, just, the oh, the, man. The seasoning, the fries seasoning. And then where where you getting where you getting your, your drink from? Like for me back in the day, we used to do strawberry sodas from uh Church's Chicken. We used to have now they do got the best strawberry soda. They still soda. got strawberry soda? They had it. Huh, I haven't had chicken in I years. I had so I churches know. chicken in a minute. We don't got no churches. Really? Well, welcome to town. We got one on every corner. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say Martin Lawrence earlier. Yes. Uh, one has to go. Martin, Eddie Murphy, 
Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Get him out of here. Randy, did you say what? Get him out of here. Man, who did you bring here? For me to talk Get to him you? out of here. I love Dave Chappelle, though. I love Martin. I love Eddie Murphy. I loved you before you said that. I love Dave Chappelle. He just, uh, he, but if it's between them, Dave Chappelle got that. Wow. You got to remember, I don't just love Martin because of the sitcoms. I love him because of the movies. Okay, so I'm going to ask Murphy you. Eddie Murphy, too. I, I'm going to ask you these questions. Let me ask you these questions and y'all give her some grace on this because I'm not asking her because I'm going to ask you some. This is for us to get to know you. Okay. This kind of gets to know your personality know and, and give us a kind of inlet on your history. So give her some slack when she answers these questions. These are her opinions and this is based off of. So I'm going to ask you these questions okay. and, and it's going to be about like gospel singers, gospel okay. artists. Uh, so this is not for us to tear down any gospel artists. I just want to know who does she prefer. Uh... Clark sisters or Pay sisters? Art. Is it? Come on. If you had to pick one to keep, who are you keeping? Okay, okay. Uh, Kim Burrell, Karen Clark Chief. Kim. Okay. Uh, Yolanda Adams, CeCe Winans. That's hard. Come on now. <laughs> For her new song, it's got to be CeCe. Okay, okay. Um, let me go to harder. choirs. These are harder. Let me go to choirs. John P. Key in New Life or Hezekiah Walker in Love Fellowship? My Uncle Jimmy got a church called Love Fellowship. <laughs> oh my goodness. Shout out to your Uncle Jimmy, Pastor <laughs> Wills. Bishop Wills. Bishop Wills. Yes. That's, uh, he, uh, 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 full gospel. Well, that's an indicator. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I told you earlier, I bought my organ. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to have to go with John P. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's going to bring it a little closer to home, at least one of them. Donald Lawrence in Tri City or Ricky Dill? I keep my master. <laughs> oh, no. Inquiry Ricky Dillard. want to know. Ricky Dillard. Ask Andre. <laughs> Ah, okay. Um, I otherwise. Um, I love Donald Lawrence. One song in particular. God's favorite. Okay. Uh, Pat Tribute or Deidre Head? Pat Tribute. Okay. Why? So Deidre Pat, he had his goal in being new and innovative, right? I should have been doing this for years hmm. before DJ Patton. And still innovative. And, and still and still innovative. Yeah. And he didn't even have he was doing the same stuff he doing years ago. And it's just now yeah. becoming what it is. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's good. Uh James Hall, his choir or youthful praise. I like this. I'm a choir person. Mm. I like the squall. And I kind of felt that. That's what you noticed. I started going to a lot of churchy choirs. It's like, James Hall. Okay. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think J.J. Harrison came out of James Hall's he choir, did. right? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. You got to pick the master over the choir, you know. The okay, choir. so you're you're putting the tour together, all right? Okay. You get to be a promoter. You're putting a tour together, and you have to take four artists from any it, four gospel artists from any time period, whether it's past, present, whatever, past or present, dead or alive. Who are you taking on this this super tour that you're putting together? It's gospel, right? It's all gospel. Yes. <laughs> Only because we're sitting in the pulpit Ooh, on geez. the stage at church. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to say, I'll go get with me. <laughs> <In the, laughs> go right get with me. Who are you taking? But, um, oh, my goodness. That is hard. I am taking... This tells me who your favorite four. Ooh. They can be solo, choir, group, Albert ensemble. Albertina Walker. Really? I am taking Albertina Walker. Maverick City Music. Oh, all time? They're on your all time list already. Come on, that's so, good. So you talking about you talking about a tour? You talking about a promoter? I'm I gotta about make a tour. money. Yeah, come on. You feel me? Smart. I gotta take my. You feel smart. Me? Let's go. <laughs> I'm talking about the all time with tour. Kirk or without. Without Kurt. Okay. I've been in a concert with them without. Him, okay. But it's without Kurt. Um, so I got, I got Albertina, I got Maverick City Music, 
I am also taking Leandria Johnson. I'm with you. Taking Zacardi with me. That's four. That's it. Is there anybody that you want to swap out? Is it somebody you say, ooh, I want to take this person? If so, who comes off the list? No choirs on this tour? Oh, my God. I definitely would take... Uh, no Ty Tribbett? Ty Tri- I would take Ty Tribbett. Who are you taking off with Ty? If I took Ty out, take Lee out. Okay. And that's only because, guess what? I'd be back there having a heart attack. That's only because, you know why? <laughs> because Ty, Ty can bring Lee and anybody else he want with him. <laughs> 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 he's gonna bring who he won't with him let me ask you this question so now you're a praise and worship leader you're a singer now you have music out uh i believe uh which we're doing you got i believe uh what, what other music do you have of your own out, out? uh-huh not anymore is I, be- I believe it's the only one out i thought you told me there was something that used to be out there yeah oh god oh god got mm-hmm. you got you so now that you're doing that let me ask you this question first before I ask you that ultimate question. Once you put I Believe out, did you get to see another side of this thing? Like, was there anything that you didn't expect that comes along with the territory of being, quote unquote, an artist? Yes. What, what um, was that? Especially the, 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 music, the, music, the music part was different for mm. me. It's not like the church does. Like, you know, it's very, very... Um, what do you mean by that exactly? So, you know, church is different. So you got church and you got production. You got church that, you know, some things can fly, some things can be done. You practice, make perfect, right. but it's not production. Production, you do it until it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Production is, we're doing this, we're, we're, we're cutting that. So on the, side, on the first time I start singing and we said, cut, let's do it again. And I'm talking about the ad libs, everything had to be the same. And it was exactly. like, I'm like, Wait a minute! I gotta breathe the same. I gotta take a deep. I gotta exhort the same. And that was live, right? Same. You did it live. live. Mm-hmm. And the crowd had to do the. Like it's just like it's something completely different than what I was used to. So you put out one song live. Mm-hmm. Did you do a whole recording? Or are we expecting something else to come out? We are. So I stopped for a minute because I was. So what about that night then? You only recorded one song, or you recorded? Just one song. Okay. Each artist. We did a. We did a full. Uh, Curtis Lindsay, shout out to you. We did. I uh, thought that was Curtis Lindsay. It's Curtis. We did. I, know, uh, I recognize his mix. Music from the heart. And I actually recognize his background. Mm-hmm. Was that the same thing that Leon was on? Mm-hmm. Okay, it makes sense. I Even did, when I, I heard his want. toms, his his drums are very distinct. A distinct sound. Shout out to Curtis Lindsay, yeah. one of my favorites. Actually, yeah, he's one of my favorite producers right now. Yeah. He's humble. He's anointed. He's oily. And he and I have never actually met met. That's crazy. Well, this right here, need, y'all need to meet. Yeah, we've never met Matt, but shout out to him. Make it happen, Randy. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I keep saying Randy, y'all. We got Randy Cole. Hey, building. Randy. <laughs> we got Randy Cole in the building, just to let y'all know. He's sitting off to the side. Uh, and I know she has to go, so I'm about to get her out of here. Okay, so real quick, what's one of your struggles? As for, what, What's one of the struggles? What do people, what is it that the average person who doesn't do what you do, and the, the person who doesn't, Get on stage and sing the person who doesn't, you know, have to get music together for the church, person who doesn't get called to sing engagements and sing events and stuff. What what is it that you what's one of the hard things? What's something that you you battle with or struggle with that can kind of help people understand you? And for those who want to do this, what what's something what's a word of advice? What would you tell them? Tell them don't be afraid of their faces. I think half the time that artists or even worship leaders, we get so caught up sometimes in the response mm. of the people. But we, should, we shouldn't we should be responding to their faces. But we should be, first of all, if you're in the spirit and if you're consecrated, like I try to keep myself before ministering, you can feel the hearts. You can feel the heart posture. You can feel the heartbeat of the people. So if you're focused on their faith, then you can't get to the, you can't get to what you're supposed to be. Your assignment is to shift the heart posture so that the man of God or the woman of God can come and basically seal the deal with the word. Mm -hmm. So it's not for you to get a certain response. You literally are breaking up that hardship. You're breaking up that follow, that follow ground, as they say, to, so that their heart postures can shift so that the word can pierce and purify and deliver and but we so caught up in faces 
So I think that we think, oh, we're, we're not good enough or we didn't do well enough or we're so focused on the performance aspect that we lose sight mm -hmm. of the ministry. The ministry is we are before. We are the, the sermonic soloists. We the, we're doing worship. We are literally getting ready for the meat. We're getting ready for the man or the woman of God to come because he is the one God sent. He is the one we come. We are the prelude. They come and seal the deal because not, God has given them the knowledge, the power, the strength. So we got to stop putting ourselves in the forefront, forefront and be like, we got to do this and we got to shift. Every round goes higher. Just because yours didn't call the praise break, don't mean that you got to feel disappointed or you got to stay there 10 more minutes to try to shake something. That's not your job. You do your job and you sit down. And sit down. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Y'all, this is Quee. I have really enjoyed this today. I want to say thank you for coming on down here and letting yeah. us do this with you, for you. And I, I appreciate this. This is this is, this is is great. And uh, anything, let's talk about where can they get the song from, I believe. All digital platforms. Yeah, how do they connect with you, period. Talk connect with folks. me. I, my, I'm, I'm just some regular person. I don't even, well, oh my God, Randy got me a website. Thanks, shout out to Jeremiah. LaquishaBurries.com. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Wow. That. LaquishaBurries.com. I got a website. Follow Spell me. Bill Burries. L A Q U I S H A B U R R I E S. And I didn't put the fin on there because most people just Laquisha Burries. LaquishaBurries.com. B U R R I E S. You can reach me. You'll see what's coming up. You'll see what I'm getting ready to do. You will know exclusively when we're about to drop. Uh, and I could tell y'all because I'm on here. Hey, um, I'm, we're about to get ready. We're, start, we're starting and getting ready to work on a single, and it's called "Never Thirst Again," and it's a, it's inspired by the woman with the, uh, the woman at the well. Let's go. So let's yeah. go. Are we excited? Let's go. Never thirst again. I'm telling you, and it's definitely a song. Uh, it's something you'll want to hear. Let's that go. Bless you. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. This is LaQuisha, y'all. Very fiend. Quee. Any last words? Say thank you for this opportunity. It's up to your children. Oh my your God. Husband, come on. My, I just want to say my, to my babies, I love you so much. And my whole entire existence is to be the best mother that I can be for you uh, and to be an example of, of God and uh, of God's grace and his mercy and everything, you know, the churchy stuff. But I love y'all too. And with endless, no, with, I cannot, my no love can measure up. I cannot even tell you how I love you to the infinity and beyond. Uh, I love you guys. Matt, I love you so much. Thank you for accepting me for me because I am who I am. Hmm. I can't change. Thank you for accepting me for me. And thank you so much for just seeing me. Oh, girl, don't thank me. Thank you. We're family now. I don't know if you know that or not. I'm excited. We're, we're thank y'all for having me. I'm nobody trying to tell everybody about, about somebody, somebody who saves. Who saves. Listen here. Anybody. Anybody. Yeah. Yes, sir. We'll see y'all next time. Thank y'all for joining us.
when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever, whatever my life, hallelujah, thou hast taught me. Even 